children's church, you can meet this people. And the other disciples was on that ship, little ship, little boat. Right. And there was out on the, I believe it's the Sea of Galilee. And the Lord had told them to go to the other side. And they had got into the boat, started to the other side, and there was a storm uh, that broke loose there on that sea that night. And it, you know, it, and, and I believe the Bible said in the fourth watch, Jesus come walking on the water. And Many scholars have interpreted that as the, the fourth watch being the darkest hour just before it begins to break dawn. And, uh, and having said that, Peter's standing in that boat, and I guess through the lightning and so forth, that when Christ was walking, somebody saw a figure on the water, and, and many, I believe, and one of the writers said they were afraid. And because uh, they didn't know who it was or didn't know what it was at first, and the four writers Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all four record this, and some of them record it a little bit different, same meaning, just the kind of different words. And but the Bible said that one of I believe it was Luke said that he would have passed them by. In other words, he would have kept going had they not cried out to him. Peter cried out, Lord. If it be a, somebody, somebody in the crowd said, that's the Lord out there. And, and Peter said, well, if it is, I'll find out. So he hollers out, Lord, if that be thou, bid me to come to you on the water. And the Lord said, come on, Peter, or come. And here's the one I'm going to get to. Peter kind of just rolled over the side of that boat, you know, however deep that boat was. I, I don't think it was like one of our boats today. I don't believe one of our little old fishing boats would have held 12 men. So it must have been a little bigger than that. It must have been a fairly good sized boat for the Duke. Yeah. So Peter gets over the side of the boat, goes down and gets on the water and starts walking out to Jesus. Remember that? Uh -huh. And then the Bible said that he began to sink uh -huh. when he saw the waves boastless. And he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. And I just kind of visualize it must have been between lightning flashes that Peter lost sight right. of the Lord. Right. And the waves rolling. And I, say, I just said this to ask you a question. Do you, can you imagine how it must have felt? She sang that song, if you slip your nail-scarred hand into my hand. Could you imagine how it must have felt when Peter reached out and said, Lord, save me. And when he felt that hand get a hold of him. I've always just visualized, dream. I've always wanted this. I never have had it. Probably never will get it. Probably ain't close enough to God to get it. He probably wouldn't fool with somebody like me on this situation. But I've always visualized, Brother, brother uh, Billy, uh, sitting at a little table in my dining room and Jesus sitting at the other side of that table. I've all, I just vision. Ben, I tell you what, I'd come unglued if, if that was to happen. Y'all have to have a pastor selection because I, I know I'd get raptured. I know I'd be out of here. But it must have been something like that when Peter felt that hand when it reached into his hand. Can you imagine how it must have felt? But then, you know, we feel around here when the Spirit's moving and we feel the presence of God and and we just want to shout and everything. See that shout and the owl running stuff back. That's just a reaction to what we're feeling. Right. The Spirit of God is already there. And that's just kind of how we react to what we feel. If I could just make it if I could feel his hand in my hand. Beautiful job, Sister King. Book of Ephesians, chapter 6. I'm going to give you what God gave me. 
I may be here five minutes. I may be here an hour and five. I don't know. I don't have a lot of notes. I don't think I have over eight or ten pages. No, I really don't have that many. But I, I prayed, and I, I try to do this every time. I don't, it's probably every time, but I pray, Lord, I, I don't want just a message. I want the message. Amen. And this is the message the Lord, Lord laid on my heart the other morning driving the school bus. Monday morning, he, he laid this on my heart. And so I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to lay it on your heart. God will help me. Ephesians chapter 6, verses we've always, we've read hundreds of times, I guess, verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to cleanse all the fire darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation. Now here's where I want to go, right in these next few words. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword this just stood out to me Monday. The sword of the Spirit. See, we're fighting a spiritual battle. We're not fighting a, a, a physical battle. We're fighting principality. We're fighting devils. And the only way to fight, you to fight, you've got to have a weapon. And the weapon is the sword of the Spirit. But the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. So I can save my weapon. Yes. It's right here. That's it. That's this it. is my weapon. Yes, it is. Thank God. So I'm going to try to bring you thought. The answer to spiritual growth. The answer to spiritual growth. Father, bless the message. Bless the people here tonight, Lord. When we leave here tonight, Lord, let us be stronger than we were when we came. In the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. 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 You may be seated. I feel and I believe I'm right. I know what I see through the years, the last 44 years, well, probably about 42 years ministry. I know what I see and I, and I, and I know what's right. I see and I believe with all my heart the biggest problem that I see in the church today is, is the fact that we have too many people that have just not grew up in the Spirit. Too many people that have not grown up spiritually. They're still babes in the Lord. Spiritually. There's way too much uh, in the church today as I see it too many spiritual babies that have just never got that. The biggest problem is what we need is a, to grow in the Lord. I could go a hundred ways, I suppose, from right here. I could preach just about somebody said against everything but two pages of fingernail files. At this point, but I really believe that too many people are too easily offended. Too easily get their feelings hurt. The scripture teaches us, lets us know beyond any shadow of a doubt that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Our weapon, one writer said, is not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You're here tonight and you're fighting the enemy. You're fighting uh, principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness Come on. In, in high places and spiritual darkness. In high places, I can tell you beyond any 
uh, doubt through 44 years experience. 44 years experience. I can tell you that the Word of God will get the job done every time. I went up to the, I, I went up to the Board of Education the other day. They called me and wanted me to come up and fill out a paper. Well, I had my old truck down here with my lawnmower hooked behind it. All that. I thought, well, I'll just jump in the van and run up there. So I did. I, I got in the Ford van. It's the prettiest. And so I, I drove it up there. And as I was leaving, Glenn Turner used to be our supervisor. Sandy, you know him. Brandy, y'all do. And uh, he uh, used to be our supervisor. So he hollered at me, you know, and walked over where I was at and spoke to him and wanted to know how I was doing it and, and looked at the van and saw the church name and said, Oh, that's a, they, they, gonna, they let you drive the van today? And I said, well, it's called 35 years experience or seniority. And uh, so I can truthfully, beyond any doubt, tell you for a fact, as sure as I'm in this pulpit tonight, from experience, from the ministry point of view and from the laity, all the way from the back door to the front door, the answer to your problem is found in the Word of God. Every situation we have, when, and it talks about the Word of God being the sword of the Spirit, and what you do with the sword is you fight your enemy. And the Word of God is your sword. When Jesus stood on that mountain side that day and or in the wilderness, I maybe it was, went up in the, in the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. And the Bible said that any of come to him, Brother Jim, and said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones to be made bread. And Jesus said, It's written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Anybody remember reading that? And he goes on. I think it's happened three times, and each time... Jesus confronted, or each time the enemy confronted the Lord, he turns around and quotes the word of God to him that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He said, cast yourself down from here. He said, it's written that even the enemy tried to use the word of God against Jesus. It's written that he would give his angels charge concerning thee, lest at any time thy dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus comes back and said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Anybody hearing me tonight, I'm going to tell you the battle you're fighting, the situation. Sometimes we can't win our battles because we don't go to the Word of God. We don't use the Word of God against the enemy. Jesus used the Word of God. The Bible said the sword and the Word are the same thing. In order for the sword to work for me, I've got to get myself into the Word of God it's got to be something daily. I can't just go on Sunday morning and listen to a, a sermon, even a good sermon. That's not enough. I can't just mosey on down to the church, you know, and, and just be there for, for whatever, for an hour listening to a sermon and never open my Bible through the week. Never in bed implant the Word of God in my heart. One writer said, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If I don't know the Word of God, I'm going to stumble. If I don't know the Word of God and I don't, I'm not using the Word of God for my life to walk by, honey, I'm going to trip and fall. That's why so many people trip and fall because the Word of God is not in them. They, they're good people. I'm not saying, and I'm not even saying they're not Christian. I'm not implying that at all. And that's not my business to say you, you are or you are not a Christian. But I'm saying many times we just don't allow the Word of God to get in our hearts like we should. And if, if it's if it's my weapon, then I've got to fight with it. And if I if I'm going to have to fight with it, then I've got to get it implanted on a daily. Basis, it's got to become a part of my everyday living. I ought to open the Word of God. Brother Zavonic was talking to me earlier today 
earlier tonight and telling me about how he's been reading a lot in the book of Genesis every morning. You know, I think that's I think that's probably one of the greatest uh, uh, things that we could possibly do is get the Word of God out the very first thing in the morning and open that Bible, just open somewhere and start reading the Word of God, reading about Jacob, what a man of God Jacob was after he had, after he had a wrestling match with the angel of God and and, uh, and take that Word of God and apply it to our life every day that I live. I can't just live for God on Sunday and Wednesday and revival. i got to live for God. God every day of my life. It's got to become, it's got to be me. I, I'm, I'm just, I can't just be a preacher. That word has got to be me. That's got to be me. I got to get it in my, in my heart. The scripture said, teaches us how can a young man or a young woman be pure. How can you of our day be pure in their in their thoughts, in their minds, and in their action? Well, you'll find the answer from Psalms 119, Joseph, verse number nine. Your answer to purity is whether whether with all, wherewithal, I get it, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways. By taking heed thereto according to the word of God. Yes. How are people, uh, how do people come through life pure? Come on. Come on. How do people keep their self, keep themselves unspotted, as James said, when he when he was given the def his definition of pure religion. Uh -huh. When he said pure religion. And undefiled before God and the Father is this. That to keep thyself. Un, uh, to visit the fatherless and the widows. And to keep yourself unspotted from the world. How do you do that? By taking heed according to the word of God. Get the word of God. If we feed, feed ourselves on the word of God daily. And pray. In the Holy Ghost, yes. we'll have strength yes. to live for God yes, if we feed on God's Word every day. I was reading an article that said something like this. I can't quote it word for word. I didn't write it down. Should have. That it's hard today for young people to live a pure life. Uh, a, a, not having sexual relationships as a young person because of the times we're living in. I don't mean to be blunt. If, I, if I'm offensive, you, you, you help me and I'll repent to you. But there's no difference in that kind of lifestyle now than it was when I was a teenager. That's, a, just, that's just a lifestyle. The way young people and anybody else stays pure because I can witness to this the Holy Ghost and the Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's just the same when I was a teenage boy and that's been a few years ago as it is tonight with our young people. If How can they keep themselves we found it in 119 of Psalms by taking heed thereunto according to the Word of God. When the Word of God, I'm quoting scriptures to people that were supposedly ministers, supposedly to be in the church, part of, part of an elder board, part of a deacon board. I'm quoting scriptures to people and they look at me like I was crazy. Didn't even know the Word of God even said it, let alone talked it backed it up because you know why because they've not had the word of God put in their heart we've got to have this inside of us ladies and gentlemen you want to get to grow spiritually you want to, to grow up and, and, and quit being quit being a baby in the spirit quit being so uh so easily offended so easily hurt 
I know people get hurt. I understand that. But I'm going to tell you, honey, you might as well just go ahead and get over it because most people don't even care. See, I am right. If they care, when they're walking down the street and said, how you doing, at least they'd stop uh -huh. <laughs> to see how you were doing. Yeah, yeah. You might be dying with cancer. You might need to talk to somebody. <laughs> and here it is, this ding a -ling. ask you how you doing, and keeps right on walking, don't even want to hear it. They don't care. Right. Listen carefully to me. If we got to get the Word of God down inside. This, this got a hold of me Monday, and, and I don't know that I'm getting it to you like I should, but this got a hold of me Monday when I begin to read and look at this. Lord, it, it, and somehow we got to understand if we're going to make it and remain pure and, and in the hour that we're living in. It's the same Holy Ghost. The, the church is no different. The, the church has still got the truth. Uh, we're still living in, in the apostolic hour. We're still living where God is still God. And if we're going to be pure, we're going to be clean, we're going to have to have the Word of God inside of us that talks to us. You know what the problem is? Choice. It's choice. I asked a good friend of mine, Years, several years ago, I said, he's talking about all this, why you got to do this, you got to do that. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, what sin is it that you have to do every day? What is it that you have to do every day? I said, you take that sin and you take one day at a time. If, it's, if you've got to tell a bad joke every day, but well, then you take at least one day and you don't tell a bad joke. All right, all right. And if you can do that, you've made the right choice. All right, all right. Our problem is not God. All right. Our problem is making the right kind of choice. Right, right. What we choose, you ready? What I choose to feed on. Right. Yes, oh, this is going to hurt now. Right. What I choose to feed on yeah. is going to dictate my life. Right. If I choose to feed on the flesh, I'm going to be as carnal as a roach bug. Right. But if I choose to feed on the Word of God, if I if I choose, was it Jeremiah that talked about swallowing the straw? Was it Jeremiah that said it was it was sweet to my? Maybe it was Ezekiel. Okay, maybe it was Ezekiel. Uh, one of them. It may have been Daniel. It doesn't matter. It got swallowed anyway. <laughs> so it was bitter to my stomach. Uh -huh. got to, we got to understand that whatever we feed on, if we feed on the Spirit, right. we're going to be controlled by the Spirit. Yes. All right. If we pray, uh -huh. if we start our day with prayer yeah. Yeah. and seeking the Lord and, and, and a Bible verse or two or three here, whatever you can do, if we start our day that way, yes, sir. Then, then we're going to be controlled that way. Yes. Yes. If we start our day with fleshly, uh -huh. lustful thoughts, then that's what's going to control us. Come on. Come on. When we're full of the Holy Ghost, there you go. Come on. Right. when we're filled Come on. with the Holy Ghost, yes. Yes. you won't have time for lust and for sin and the things of the flesh. Not if you're full of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost changes lives. When I got the Holy Ghost, my life changed. My, my, entire, my entire plan, my everyday activity changed. I didn't go to Ching Chong's anymore. I know nobody in here know what Ching Chong's was. I just think. I hope those are not good. No. It was a, it was a Ching Chong. I don't know why they call it Ching Chong. That, 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 I guess that's as good a stupid name as anything else. But Brother Crumb, when I got the Holy Ghost, All right. I went back to my work. And I never told you this, but I, we were there. And the following Christmas, well, the Christmas prior to that, I got so drunk at work. I didn't even remember driving my truck home. I got up off the couch about 5 that afternoon 
or maybe a little early in that because it, it was still daylight, so it must have been a little early because it's in the winter time. It was around Christmas. We'd got out for our Christmas break or Christmas uh, uh, vacation. And uh, I got up and went out my back door to see if my truck was there. I couldn't even remember. Boy, don't that sound like a lot of fun? And I thought, God, if I don't remember the truck being here, who drove that crazy truck home? I found out later I did. Listen, the very next year, God had filled me with the Holy Ghost. I'd been in a church. I'd straight, I, my life had turned around according to the Word of God. It was an older gentleman there who was fixed to have that same set up again. The boss man's dad worked there. And he said, well, are you going to get drunk again? I must have really showed myself. I must have really acted an idiot. And I said, no, sir, I'm not going to drink. I don't drink anymore. He said, since when? I said, since God filled me with the Holy Ghost. Well, that ended that conversation. But he's one of these good old Baptist boys that dudes you can take a little nip for everything. Somebody said for the stomach thing. I said, well, we're talking a little wine for the stomach. I know a lot of people should never have no stomach trouble. That's right. But if wine tastes good with a stomach ache, well, they, they've got their, their, their good shape the next hundred years. But that's what the, the same, it's the same Holy Ghost. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the same. And whatever I feed myself on is what's going to control my life. Yes, it will. As Christians, we have to make these right choices in life. We have to choose whether we're going to feed the flesh or whether we're going to feed the spirit. If we feed the spirit, then we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We're in a culture right now like we've never seen before. Amen. Amen. We're in a culture that blames everybody else. That's right. That's it's right. never my fault. No yeah. Come on. You know, it, it's not the teacher's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's not the student's fault. It's the teacher's fault. Uh, come on. Come on. It's the bus driver. Uh, right. yeah. Yeah. It's the principal. Uh, right. it's, the, it's the police officer. Yeah. Just because I was running 90 to 35, he wants to pull me over. Uh -huh. right. It's his fault. It's his fault. Yeah. We're in a, in, a, in a culture that blames and don't, don't want to take any kind of personal responsibility whatsoever. Right. But as a Christian, That's we got to take some responsibility for ourselves. Yes, it's up to you, honey, to re re resist the devil and make him flee from you. That's up to you to do it. Jesus has already paid the price. He ain't coming back. He's not going to come back and die at Calvary again. That ain't going to happen. He's already done all of that. It's already sealed. Now it's up to you and I to live for Him. It's up to me to say no to temptation. It's up to me to not booze it up. It's up to me to not mess myself up with liquor and wine and, and cigarettes and, and gambling and carrying up. It's up to me to make it my mind that when I got saved, I quit throwing my money away. I quit spending money on foolishness. I got a family to support. I know a lot of people ought to get a, a grip on life and realize they got a family to take care of. Get out get them a job. Oh, it is a truth. Instead of blaming somebody else, I read a story about a man long, 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 long time. He went way, he goes way back to the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 14. He made a choice in life. Now therefore fear the Lord. He calls all of Israel, all their heads, their judges, their kings, this great tribe of Israel, after the death of Moses, Joshua takes over. He calls all their leaders together. Gathers them all. It must have been a slew of them. And he told them, Fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day. It's your choice. I can preach to you, but it's your choice. I can hoop and holler and scream, 
But you've got to make your decision that I'm going to be more spiritual than I've ever been. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the floods or the gods of the Amorites in whom land ye joy help. Now here's his choice. But as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. What a decision. This man of God made Brother Crumb and a right decision. He chose for his own family. We're going to serve God. Well, I wish we had some daddies. I know we got great dads sitting here tonight and you're here and I thank God for that. I understand that. But I wish this world had some more daddies that would make up their mind. My family's going to be in the house of God. Come Lord's day. I wish we had some moms. That if we had some dads, somebody said we need some. We need some Sarahs. I said, I think we need some Abraham. Well, I, think, I think we need a few Abrahams that will, that will take charge and take control and, and act like a man and act like a husband and act like a daddy. Tell you this. this is just old brother Creasy. I believe if we had some Abrahams, we'd have some Sarah. Well, I don't know of any woman. I've got like brother Stanley. Remember old Jerry Clyde was telling about my mama don't want nobody messing with her deal. I think if we had some Abraham, mama would have such a good deal, she'd want to be a Sarah. Come on, ladies, I'm in your corner tonight. I just like to, I'd like to be an Abraham. I'd like to be able to to just have the faith when that old patriarch recently got that stuff off of that donkey that day and threw it over his shoulder and threw a, a, a bottle of it over Isaac's shoulder and looked up the top of that mountain and looked back at that servant and said, you stay here with the, with the donkeys. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He called it something else for yeah. lack of being offensive. I don't use that. Yeah. You stay here with the donkeys. Yeah. Me and the lad, he said, uh -huh. we're going yonder. To worship. Here's what, and he said, and we will uh -huh. return. Yes, that's what he said. Yeah. I believe he had his head in the book, don't you? Yes, he did. I believe he knew what God yes, would do. I believe he'd already made his mind up. I'm yes. going to offer Isaac as a sacrifice, but God's bringing him back because God made me a promise that in Isaac all nations would be blessed. And God can't bless a nation if Isaac is burning up on the altar. Praise God. Praise God. If we have to choose, we choose the spiritual over the carnal. But seek ye first, 6.33 of Matthew, the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all the other things be added up to. It's called priorities. God, we have to set some priorities. You know, I ought to be in the house of God every time the door is cracked. You have to prioritize. Some things you just have to say. That'll keep. That's right. That's right. I know I got overtime. I know I need to make, but that'll keep. Uh -huh. I got to go to the house of God. Uh -huh. I know I got company coming tomorrow, and I got to, I need I need to mop the floors, and I need to scrub the toilets, and I need to clean and all like that. That'll keep. Right. Let company go to the motel. <laughs> they want that clean <laughs> and get the bed bugs. <laughs> God's made some priorities. Am I making sense to it? Yes, we have to prioritize. I'm gonna go to, if I'm going to be in the house of God, I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, yeah, I would have been fired. I would have been tired and feathered going out here way before 35 years if I used some of the excuses that I get. All right. All right. You're right. I, yeah, thank you, sweetie. I am right. Amen. See, I can't use it. I can't go. I can't just because Uncle Zeke's coming. I can't stay at home. That's i got to preach to y'all. Right. I wish somebody say amen. amen. I can't do that. God put me here. What, what am I going to tell God if I, if I miss every other Sunday? What am I going to tell God if I don't ever come to church? I know what God's going to tell me. He's going to tell me to depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew. You say you think it's that serious? I think it's that serious. Here's what I think it's so serious about. Here's what I think. I have got four. I got one sitting there, and I got a one out of town in Birmingham. I a business meeting for Dickmore Housing, and I got two over here, I believe, over here in this department over here working right now for the church. That's why I got to make some priorities. In my life. That's why 40 years ago I made a priority, and I said, if we're going to be a Christian, we're going to be a Christian. If I'm going to be a man of God, I'm going to be a man of God. 
and I'm going to have my family in the house of God every time the door is open. Now, I'm not sorry I've done that. So it's a price called power. I can choose not to do that. I can choose to resign. I can retire. Man, I got more money than no. I can retire and quit eating. Quit buying gas. Come on, y'all. Come on. Some of y'all got to retire soon. That's why I'm not retired. I like to eat. I got I got a habit I like. I got it's called food. Hello. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's right. Okay, got to prioritize. Got to choose the spiritual rather than the carnal. Got to choose the eternal rather than the temporal. Yes. You heard me say, you've heard me use the, the term uh, that I tell people or I ask people when they're going to, if they tell me they're leaving and moving out of town, I always ask them, Did you, have you found your church? I, I, my, my, my interest is not so much if they're moving out of town. If they feel ready to move out of town, jump on the wagon. But make sure you got a church waiting on you when you get there because you got a family to get there. See, the man, the man who wants to make the right choice, that's why I keep using this term man because the Bible text says the man's the head of the house. And so if the man makes the right choice for his family, he will refuse a higher paying job in an area where there ain't a good church. Because money is temporal, but the spirit is eternal. Just because it's a higher paying job don't always mean it's the will of God. Where are you going to go to church? What about your church? What about your friends that you have in your church? Verse 19 of, of Joshua that we were reading there kind of implies to me, I'll read it to you just Jeff 24, 19. Uh, Joseph, if you would, please, sir. It seems to me that it implies that people couldn't serve the Lord because it wouldn't be convenient for them. And Joshua said unto the people, ye cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgression nor your sins. That means it's talking about if they didn't uh, turn their life around. It seems that they didn't, that it was a higher price to pay than they wanted to pay. That was what it, it all boiled down to. Because God was too holy for their lifestyle. We're in a world tonight loves the, the uh, message of the Holy Ghost. They love the talking in tongues. But they don't want to change their lifestyle. Right. You that have TVs, you see that all the time. You watch it. If you got a TV, you see these, these uh, I almost said actors, and I guess that's probably what they are, really. Uh, you see them on the TVs. They never change their lifestyle. <laughs> and, and, and I can I can tell you that, that God is not pleased with that one because I know the Holy Ghost is still the same and I know when I got the Holy Ghost my lifestyle changed now there's a lot of things I didn't do before I come to God uh, I heard one man I heard one man a friend of mine years ago said, made a statement said he went to a church visiting a church and he did not this man that friend of mine did not believe in taking real wine for the communion of which I don't eat and the Bible don't support it. The Bible says it's the fruit of the vine. It don't say anything about real wine. Okay? We'll make sure you understand that. He said they got ready to take communion that night and, and said, Pastor Tom said, now this is real wine. He said, well, I don't, I'm not, I don't care to take it. I don't want to take it. And, and of course the pastor tried to make a, make a, a, a good defense. Thought that you're supposed to do this, da, da, da. He said, look, he said, I don't mean to be offensive, but I didn't drink that stuff before I got to church. Yeah. All right. And said, so I surely will start drinking it after I got you. Something about the Holy Ghost, it changes your lifestyle. See, it, it turns, it closes everything that was open and it opens everything that was closed. And this is what Joshua is really referring to. He saying that God is too holy for your lifestyle. You've made the wrong choice. 
You've made the wrong choice is what he's telling thee. You see that it costs, regardless of why, I don't care what these people tell you, all this free religion and free this and free that, I'm going to tell you, it costs you something to serve the Lord. All right. yes, sir. Here's what it'll cost you to serve God, everything the world's got. That's, right. That's what it costs. Right. It costs you all the marijuana you pile in this building. It costs you all the booze you pile in this building. Right. Are you on it? That's what it will cost you yes, to serve the Lord. Got to make a decision. Your decision will be based on your commitment. That's right. Where are you committed? That's, right. That's where your decision will be. All right. If you're committed to God, Brother Crumb, then your decision will be to live for God. That's right. If you're committed to the flesh, then your decision will be to serve the flesh. All right. Your decision will be based on your commitment to the Lord and to the Lord's Word. Our environment, I've heard it all my life, and I've even said it. Well, they're a product of their environment. I, I understand. I'm not, I'm not totally ignorant. They're a product of their environment. But let me tell you something. Take this very carefully. Your environment will have no, no impact on you at all unless you allow it to. You have to allow the environment to pull you the wrong way. That's called a choice. Call it joy. When I realize how special I am to God, do you know you're special yes, sir. to God? Amen. It cost Him everything He had. All right. Everybody in here tonight are special. Amen. In God's eye. When we get a hold of that, we're not going to want to see it. They can preach all that mess all they want to do. They can scream all that. Well, you've got a sin. Nobody's perfect. Now, now I'm saying a little bit. I don't, I don't quite understand at all. I don't understand why you say you can't be perfect. When Matthew 5 48 says, Be you there. Even as your Father who's in heaven is perfect. I don't understand that. That's contradicting to that. Because I'm just no, I'm just no cotton lake boy. Somebody said I, I went to, uh, I went to uh, uh, 12 grades in school. I went to. Seven in first grade, and five in second. But I, I do know that that's that, to me that contradicts. Don't tell me I can't be perfect. The word of God tells me to be perfect. Now I ain't, I'm not going to be perfect in your eye. I won't be. You won't be perfect in my eye. I'll always have something I can say. Well, you know, oh, uh, oh, uh, let's see. Let me pick up. Oh, Bill. Oh, pick up, sister. Oh, sister Truth. You know, she ain't so. But in God's eye, different story. In God, my environment will only pull me if I will allow it to. If I can just, like I said, if I can just realize how much God really cares. You got to understand this, and I'm closing with this, just because you can place up if you want to. The basis of all sin comes from Satan. Now we can hoot and holler about it all we want to, but it's all supported by Satan. Satan pushes every bit. Of it. He's behind all sin. Amen. So when we yield to sin, when we say, "Well, I, you got to sin a little bit every day," what you're saying is you've got to let Satan have rule over you a little bit every day. Right. You don't have to do that, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to do that. Not when a man called Jesus went to a hill called Calvary. If you'd been the only man in the world, Benny Boo, you would die for you. Sister Boo. Stand with me if you feel up to it, if you would. That's our answer for spiritual growth. Don't you love it? Would you gather around with me? Would you come and pray with me tonight? Thank you, Jesus. If you don't have anything else to pray about, pray for me. Just gather around and pray for me. I will praise Him forever and ever for the cross made the difference for me and the old rugged cross 
made the difference in a life bound by heartache and defeat. And I will praise Him forever and ever for the cross made.
Let me see. Who was it? Brother Crumb. Jimmy Crumb. Come on out here, Grandpa. Oh, you can stand right there. Just stand up. We got an old grandpa here tonight. Just give me just a few minutes. Huh? Um, wouldn't even believe it if I told you. <laughs> if I told you, you wouldn't recognize him. <laughs> Brother Crumb had a birthday, and, and we had an anniversary. Come on up here, Sister Kay. Come on. Now, this old time we had a birthday. Now, who can guess how old, Brother Jim? 75. 45. 45. Boy, that's a drop. 65. 65. 65. No, who said that? You said 75. No, that's not it. Sister King and Sister Sue, what do y'all know? 76. I don't know those. 76. 76. Seventy-four. Seventy. Seventy-three. All right. All right. Y'all go down. Seventy-three ain't it either. Seventy-four. He don't know how old he is. How am I supposed to go back? Seventy-four. All right. And now let's see how we can get. You need to go sit down. Good. Go down there, buddy. Go down there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, how long? At least I know people told me the other night that this couple have been married. Forty-three years. Four. Thirty-something. Thirty. Thirty-something. Mike, put your Okay. Let's sing Happy Birthday and Happy Anniversary. A happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Anniversary. And say, Lord, thank you for the beautiful service tonight. Thank you for the beautiful service tonight. Bring us back Sunday in Jesus' name. Bring us back Sunday in Jesus' name. Brother Chris, yes, sir. Uh, as everybody knows, every year somebody else has a birthday. Sunday night after the service, we will be having refreshments downstairs to celebrate the past birthday. So everybody bring cold cuts. Um, just like we always do, but Sunday night at the church. All right. And he's going to get a year younger. <laughs> <laughs> Finally be off at 39. <laughs>